Hello, friends. Today's session is actually a makeup session for what we missed on Friday. The topic is going to be leadership. And uh, as I said, it's a makeup session. So Friday's topic is leadership, and that's what we are going to talk about today. Uh, today, we are going to talk about what makes a leader and what are the qualities that make one, and especially what are the qualities that make one an outstanding leader. So let's delve right into it, and I'll start sharing my screen. Okay, so as I said, today's topic is what makes a leader. I think we know what are the qualities that a leader should possess. And one is intelligence. Undoubtedly, he should be tough. He has to face many, many situations, all of which are not very easy. He has to be determined. A leader who is not determined will delete that. And that's not going to take the team or the group or the company anywhere. He should be a great organizer. That's one task, which is maybe mundane for a leader, maybe way, way below his pay grade, but he still needs to be a good organizer because only then can he set up a team that will be efficient at organizing. He should be a visionary. This is very, very important because a leader has to be able to see what is coming ahead, what is expected to be coming ahead, and therefore has to start preparing his team his company, his business for going through that. So, but these are traditionally defined qualities associated with leadership. But is this really enough? No, I don't think so. And while these are essential qualities, they are, according to me, insufficient for a leader especially for someone who wants to be an outstanding leader. So cultivating a humane and more personal qualities will make you a better leader. And what do we mean by this? That's what we are going to look at over the next 15 minutes or so. And that's what is the really the essence of today's talk. So for outstanding leadership, which is what we are talking of. Run of the mill leaders are there all over the place, but they don't create magic for the companies. What we are talking of is finding a leader who's going to create magic for the company. So for outstanding leadership, there's one key quality, which of course has many, many facets to it, but there's one key outstanding quality that is an essential, and that is emotional intelligence. We talk of intelligence, which is fine, but emotional intelligence is something that is different, but that is very essential for a leader to become outstanding, to become a great leader, to become a super leader. And that is what we are going to look at today. So truly effective and outstanding leaders, they may have great training. They may have a very incisive mind, very sharp in what they are thinking. They may have super ideas, but they can only be so good. If they want to be outstanding, they must have a very high degree of emotional intelligence. Okay, And this actually will remind you, or rather it reminds me, of a lot of things. Okay, So... What are the essential components of emotional intelligence? Self-awareness. If you are not aware of yourself, you can't get anywhere. Self-regulation. Control. Self-control. As we say, control G. Control. Control. Motivation. You need to be self-motivated without anybody pushing you, whether it is the law, whether it is it is somebody else who is a mentor to you, you need to be self-motivated. You need to have empathy. Otherwise, how are you going to carry a team? So you need to have empathy and you need to have social skills because the leader is going to interact with so many different people. The board of directors, for all you know, if you're the CEO, 
you will be interacting with your workers, you'll be interacting with your uh, colleagues, you'll be interacting with your staff, you'll be interacting with customers, you'll be interacting with vendors, you'll be interacting with bank officials. There are so many different categories of people you interact with. So if you don't have the right social skills, it's going to be a big challenge. So IQ, managerial skills, technical skills, all matter. Undoubtedly, you cannot be a manager if you don't have any of these things. You will never be a good leader. But being a good leader is just the core. It is a basic level capability that will that these requirements will make you a good leader. But without emotional intelligence, you cannot be a truly effective and outstanding leader. And that's what we should all strive to be, outstanding leaders. So that is what we are going to look at. And this actually reminds me of something that I say very, very, very often, is that it is not your aptitude. IQ, managerial skills, technical skills, they are vital, basic requirements. That is the aptitude you want. But your attitude, over here we read attitude, as emotional intelligence, but your attitude that will determine your altitude. So depending on what level of emotional intelligence you have will really be the criteria by which it will be decided how good, how effective a leader you are. If you want to be truly effective and outstanding, you have to cultivate emotional intelligence. While we are not looking at it today, Maybe in the future, if, uh, if it does come up or if people want uh, to hear about it and get some responses, we can talk about whether emotional uh, intelligence is something that can be developed or does it just come inherently. So that's a separate topic altogether. But essentially, let us accept and let us realize, recognize the necessity that emotional intelligence, a good high level of emotional intelligence is a vital, essential part to becoming a truly effective and outstanding leader. So what are the components of emotional intelligence? As we just saw some time back, the first component is self-awareness. Now, what is self-awareness? Self-awareness is the ability to accept and understand your moods, emotions, drives, these are the three things that you have to be able to have and understand. And not only do you need to understand your moods, emotions and drives for yourself, but you also need to be able to understand how it is going to affect the others who are working with you or whom you are interacting with. So moods, emotions and drives for you, you have to understand how they are affecting you, but also very important is to see how they affect the others with whom you are interacting. So now what are the traits of somebody who has self-awareness? First of all, that person is self-confident because he knows his moods, he knows his emotions, he knows what drives him and he can develop and cultivate that and make sure that drive stays alive. He is ultra-confident of himself. So he has self-confidence. He has a very realistic self-assessment. He knows his weaknesses. He knows his strengths. He knows what drives him. And therefore, he's continuously in a motion towards propelling himself forward and higher. So realistic self-assessment. Self-deprecate. By this, I do not mean that you self-deprecate yourself unnecessarily or to the, uh, to the extent where you might fall down in your own eyes, so to say. No, that's not what I mean here. What I mean by self-deprecating for a person who wants to be an outstanding leader is that he has to be able to analyze and understand his shortfalls and what are the problems that he has within himself, which might, which might stop him or which might restrict him from achieving certain goals, certain greatnesses that he has in mind. In fact, I would go a step further. This 
analysis of what are your weaknesses and strengths. The good outstanding leader should be able to actually do for everybody who is on his team. Only then every single person on his team can achieve greatness. He has to have a sense of humor. At times even humor based on himself. He has to be able to laugh. He has to have a good sense of humor. Everything in life cannot be taken seriously where everybody is just stressed out all the time. No. Humor is an essential part of life. There are many situations that will arise where a little bit of humor will break the ice and will dissipate the tension, the stress that is there in the room. So he has to have a sense of humor. The component, second component that we are going to look at is self-regulation. Control yourself. Okay. And what is it? It's the ability to control our moods, impulses, and for us to be able to think before acting. You cannot make impulsive statements. You cannot do anything rash. Therefore, you need to think before you act. And these are things that will contribute to your self-regulation. So what are the traits of somebody who has a high degree of self-regulation? First of all, he is trustworthy and has integrity. If you do not have trustworthiness and integrity built into you, you cannot regulate yourself. Because to regulate yourself, the other person sitting across you should realize and constantly feel that you are balanced. Now, for him to get that impression that you are balanced, it is necessary for him to know that you are trustworthy and that whatever you say or whatever you tell him or whatever you do will be something that is very integral part of whatever it is. And with absolute honesty, it is done with complete integrity and whatever you do, is necessary for that project, for that task that we are going to be talking about. He should be able to accept ambiguity because when you're talking of self-regulation, you don't know what is coming to you. You don't know everything is not clear to you all the time. So you have to be able to accept ambiguity and otherwise what will happen is that if you don't accept ambiguity, anytime you face something that you don't really understand completely, you might just go off the hook. And that's not, that's not then self-regulation. So to have good self-regulation, to be able to control your moods and impulses, you need to have the ability to accept ambiguity. And then, of course, once you accept it, you have to sit down, analyze it. You can't let it lie there. So you have to have the ability to accept the ambiguity, then sit down, think about it, analyze it, figure out why and what is that whole ambiguous situation about, and then take action. So basically, think before acting. You have to be open to change because your moods and impulses might be to do something, but then while discussing with people, you will be able to, or you will definitely get feedback, which is contrary to what you believe is the best thing to do. So in such a situation, if you don't go in with an open mind, and if you are not open to change, you probably could be taking the wrong decision and leading the whole team and the company in the wrong direction. And you need to be analytical because not only to check situations which are ambiguous or various other things or to think before acting. You need to be analytical because that is a core requirement for self-regulation. You need to be able to analyze anything and everything that comes your way with a cool mind, with a sober mind and then take a step forward Okay, after making sure that the analysis is something that is in the right direction. Component number three, as I said earlier, we have five components. That's what we are going to look at today. Component number three is motivation. I know a lot of people who lack personal inherent motivation. What is motivation? Motivation is the passion to pursue your goals. Okay, with 
energy, constant energy. You don't let off. Persistence. No matter what, you are going to walk towards your goal. Whether it's uh, it's uh, thorns on the road or whatever, you are going to walk and persist in the direction of your goals. And this motivation, this persistence and the energy that you put into it should not be just for money or status. It should be because it's the right thing to do. It should be because that's what your team needs. It should be because that's what's going to take your company in the right direction. So motivation is pursuing your goals with energy, persistence, with reasons beyond money and status. That is important. A lot of times you find that people do something only because they're getting enough money. Even a laborer will do that. You give him enough money, he'll do whatever you ask him to do. But we are talking of leaders. We are talking of leaders who are going to make a difference in the world, who are truly outstanding leaders. Okay, And for them, everything is not about money and status. It is about doing the right thing it is about making sure that you are leading your team, your company, or whatever group you're leading in the right direction. So what are the traits of somebody who is uh, motivated and has very high level of motivation? The first of thing is that he has to have a very strong drive. He has to be wanting and consistently pursuing his persistence again, or whatever. He has to be very optimistic. I mean, he cannot say that, oh, this is not going to happen and stop. Where? It's not going to take him ahead. He has to be optimistic. And yes, you will face challenges. Let us not uh, discount that fact. But in the face of challenges, it's a question of sitting back, looking at why those challenges cro cropped up and how to resolve those challenges. At the end of the day, it's all about that. And you need to move beyond your failures. It's not only challenges that come your way, but you will make mistakes. There may be things that happen which are beyond your control and which were not possible for you to visualize earlier. And therefore, there is a step that you take which can lead to some kind of a setback, a failure of sorts. You need to move beyond that. You need to get up, shake off the dirt, from your fall and just move ahead. You need to, yes, don't just move ahead forgetting about the incident. You don't let that incident dwell on your mind, but make sure that you learn enough from the incident not to make that mistake happen again. That is essential. If you fall, there's nothing lost. If you get up and move ahead, great. But when you fall and get up and move ahead, and with that, you take lessons from that fall. That's what makes you truly great. So move beyond your failures. You have to have organizational progress. And these are things that you need very, very critically at times. Because sometimes you won't have the time to sit and plan out an organizational uh, system that you need. You might have to think just on your feet at that time. And therefore, that organizational prowess, that capability to organize things wonderfully and fast is very important. Component number four is empathy. Empathy is the ability and you need to be capable of understanding the needs and emotional state of others. So you need to have that ability to understand the needs and the emotional state of others who are working with you. Because if you are not sensitive to that, if you do not understand that, it could lead to challenges of trust, challenges of respect between you and the other person. And you have to be capable of treating them according to the situation. Somebody might be going through a phase. Let's just say. And he's in a wrecked up emotional situation. Now at that time, if you don't treat them the way they should be treated, considering the kind of emotional stress or emotional state they are in, you need to be able to handle them with, well, not always kids love, but in the right way. 
Okay, and once you treat them in the right way, trust me, that person will respect you even more. He'll do even more for you than you can imagine. So what are the traits of somebody who has good empathy? The first thing is that they have an expertise in building and maintaining relationships. Without empathy, maintaining a relationship is very, very difficult. And you can build relationships if you have empathy because you might find somebody in distress with whom you don't really have a very serious relationship at work or wherever but by being empathy we are full of empathy for them in their situation and explaining it to them maybe give them a shoulder to cry on I don't know what is necessary depending on the situation but that will help you to build relationships not just maintain them with the team could happen very often. A team member is falling behind, team member is not finishing his work on time. It may be he or she is going through some kind of a stress. He wants to go early, she wants to go early. They have some kind of family commitments which they can't get out of. You need to have empathy to be able to understand. By that, I'm not saying that you always need to tell do what they think they should be doing. No. You have your goals. The company has its goals. They are one part of it. That part of it needs to be handled, but not all the time in such a way that the company's goals or your goals will get derailed because of the empathy you show them. And whenever something like that happens, you need to have that organizational prowess to plan a system where you will make up for that lost time or lost hours or whatever it is. And you will need empathy with your client and vendors. There might be a vendor who is not supplying to you in time. There might be a customer who is not paying you in time. You need to have empathy. You need to understand the situation. Yes, if they're taking you for a ride, forget about empathy, just go after them. Yes, very seriously, go after them. But if they genuinely have problems, if they are honest, if they are full of integrity, and then they have a challenge, Please understand what is the situation and work out, sit with the customer, sit with your vendor and figure out how best the situation can be resolved so that your, you are focused on your goal, so that your goals don't get disrupted to a point where it cannot be brought back on track. And also in today's world, especially cross-culture understanding. Forget about inter-country I'm talking of intra-country. The culture of a North Indian is different from the culture of a West Indian. I'm talking of India alone. It is different from the culture of an East Indian and is different from the culture of a South Indian. So you need, when you're working in groups, especially today when everybody is working in mixed bags, so to say. Okay, We are all now metropolitan. You will find your neighbor is a Gujarati, another neighbor is a Marwadi, another neighbor is a Tamil, South Indian. You need to be able to understand their cultures and make sure that you are sensitive to it. You cannot do something that is going to hurt them. And sometimes it might happen that you hurt them. But at that time, your empathy and treating them accordingly. And then, of course, making sure that you make up for the lapse. It can be as simple as, okay, come, let's have a coffee. I'm sorry what happened, but let's let's have a coffee and chat about it, maybe. So you need to have cross-culture understanding. And the last component that we are talking about when it comes to emotional intelligence is the social skill. As I said earlier, when we were talking about the five components, you are going to have to interact with a variety of people. Right from the board of directors, to the lowest, the people who are just helping you to keep your factory clean and neat and tidy. Okay, And outsiders, there will be vendors, there will be bank people, customs people, depending on the kind of business you are in. So you need to be able to build and manage relationships and also build networks. Because those networks are what helps you when you when you're looking for something to be done which is out of the way. 
you may not know about it. Okay, but that time, if you have a good network, talk to your network and you'll find some solution. You'll find the right contact you need to get that task done. So what are the traits of somebody who has great social skills? They are excellent at building rapport. And that's how networks grow. So they are excellent at building rapport. They're very persuasive. They can convince you or convince anybody in the right manner, with the right words, with the right logic on what is wrong and how to resolve it. They need to be team builders. No leader can be successful if he doesn't have a good team. So if you want to be an outstanding leader, you have to have an outstanding team. And therefore, one of the essential things is social skills, where you make sure that you build a great team. I hope this has helped. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to it. If you have any questions, please do write. I have received some questions on my last talk, and uh, I will be replying to them. I well, I've been a little lazy over the last two days. Uh, using the 26th holiday and then a follow-up to it, 27th Saturday, to just chill and enjoy with friends. So I'll I'll get to work from tomorrow. I sat down today to just write this. Today is uh, Sunday, by the way. I just sat down to write this because uh, I thought I didn't want to miss the Friday talk. Okay. So I hope you all had a great weekend. People who have gone out and enjoyed the long weekend, do come back and listen to this. I'm sure you will find it helpful. And please do, as usual, set in your comments, like the video, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube especially. Thank you very much. I think sometime next week, I might also start uh, sending you the messages from the WhatsApp number. So please be on the lookout for that and try to save that number so that you, you don't miss any messages. Thank you. Have a great evening and see you back at work tomorrow. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye.